some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and today I'm doing a no run through review for the newest scenario pack on Marvel Champions, The Hood. Uh, this is the third, I believe it is the third scenario pack for Marvel Champions. The, they had, uh, yeah, the Green Goblin, then Wrecking Crew, and then this one. So surprisingly, they have not done a whole lot of these. They've done now three big box sets, like ca mini campaigns, but yeah, individual scenarios they haven't done. Uh, and this is one that I know nothing about. I'm able to gather enough from having played it on kind of what the hood is. It's like the mastermind trying to get all the major, you know, villain organizations to work together. And that is exactly what they do here. If that's how it is in the comics or whatever type of media the hood is involved in, then that's exactly what this is. As you can see, there are nine different uh, modular sets. So this is something that is absolutely fantastic to bring into Marvel Champions is just way more variety. There's just so much content for this now. And just this one scenario pack, I would say if you're looking for if you're looking for theme, then Green Goblin is probably one that most people are going to gravitate towards. If you want more stuff and more, you know, variety and uniqueness whenever you play this, then absolutely get the hood because that's all this brings. So, uh, I'm going to show each of these individually. I just kind of wanted the overall shot to show you how much comes with this. But first, uh, we're going to talk about the two things that aren't related to these necessarily. And that is the fact that it comes with uh, a new standard two set of cards that you can replace with your regular standard set. So once again, another reason to, to get this is because now you, you can cycle out standard one and replace it with standard two and standard two just comes with an actual static card that is called for formidable foe which gives the um villain a, a new keyword called steady and steady means they require two cards to be stunned and confused before it actually does it for them so uh it doesn't get rid of like the first card so you don't have to stun them you know twice in a row on the same round uh or confuse them but now you to stun them, to prevent them from attacking or uh, thwarting, you have to apply it twice. So that already makes it harder. But yeah, there's the, uh, you still have your Shadows of the Past. So that's how you get your uh, Nemesis stuff involved. But yeah, th these ones are, they're, they're pretty rough. Like they're not, they're not super, super easy, but neither were the original standard sets, but that gives you variety. And then you also get an expert two set of cards four cards to replace expert and your formidable foe uh has a reverse side for expert mode if you are into that so definitely just wanted to talk about those because i'm very happy that these were included uh i mean the standard sets you didn't see those cards all the time uh mainly because of just how the um enemy deck was created but still that's there's just more of a good thing all right so Let's go ahead and move these out because not all of them, like there's not a whole bunch of like cards for each each deck, but I definitely wanted to showcase that there are nine individual sets and there is a difficulty um, like metric that this uh, that this brings. So let's actually just zoom in on the hood. Let's talk about, of course, my main man himself if I don't get any stupid ass glare. All right, that should be good enough. Okay, so the hood, what does he have? Well, of course he has a standard three, like every villain does, but, uh, and then increasing in thwart and attack, well, only an attack in expert mode. But his ability is called foul play, which is you discard the top card of the encounter, like this is in level one, and if it's not a hood card, so if it's not one of his 16 cards, then it goes uh, in front of you face down. So, and each player does this. So uh, it, he cycles through the encounter deck quite a bit. And you might be thinking, well, why wouldn't he give you his cards? Well, because his cards suck. So he's really, he's the mastermind behind getting all these uh, different, what do they call them? Um, 
Uh, modular, yeah, modular sets. He's trying to get all of them, like, out and actively working together, which is really cool thematically, and then whenever he shows up, he really shows up. But, and then the hood, uh, level two, uh, you add, and this will make a little bit more sense whenever I explain how you set it up, but you add another deck into the encounter deck, and then now his foul play makes you draw two cards, and then the first one that is not his, that goes into, in front of you, face down. So, that's really what he does. Those are his cards. And then he has his three uh, main schemes. Um, and the setup is you choose seven of these nine. And whenever you are looking at setting it up, like based off the difficulty, which is actually in the little booklet that they give you, is if you want a lower difficulty, you do one through seven. If you do moderate, you do two through eight. And if you want hard, you do three through nine. So, and then you can see what all of them do. Well, not what they all do, but uh, which ones they are. Or you can just mix and match. You can just take whatever seven you feel like playing with and just rolling with it, which is what I've done. But, uh, and uh, let me just let you uh, know, it um, doesn't work out. Like, it's very, this is a very, very challenging scenario pack. And they all should be because they're all kind of standalone. I feel like they all should be uh, pretty hard. Um, Wrecking Crew, I feel like it's kind of easy, but uh, Green Goblin's pretty challenging, and he actually has two ways to play, and then this has a bunch. So, whenever you set up, you choose seven of the nine, and then you have your, you choose a standard set, like one or two now, and then you just take one of those at random, I just kind of had the seven off to the side, I just grab one and shuffle it in without looking at it, and then that's your encounter deck, and then you leave the other six kind of off on their own. And that is because, yeah, when you go to level uh, two, then you choose one of those at random and shuffle them in. So thematically, once again, it is the hood recruiting more crime syndicates to work together and then get shuffled into the encounter deck. And then he has some of his own his own cards. Like, I'll just now nah, move that move that right right there. Oh, and also each of the uh, main. Um, the main um, schemes are whenever they're revealed, then you choose another one. So by each of the of the first two or the next two, you know, two and three, you take another one. So you will have one of your seven, then two more. So you're gonna have three of those seven shuffled into the deck, all at random. Or I guess you could pick. It doesn't doesn't. I, don't, I mean, it's your game. Do whatever you want. But so that's the hood stuff, and then he has his cards. So this one gives him Retaliate and Steady. So once again, Steady is where you need to do two of a status effect to actually have it take effect. Then this one, and I think there's, no, just the one, you have Field Recruitment. So this is one of his cards and the only card in his deck that actually takes another modular set that you have set aside and shuffle it in. So you're gonna put in, unless if, if you don't beat him, then you're going to put in four modular sets of varying difficulty. So that is uh, field recruitment. And then he has uh, a lot of ones that make you do his foul play. So you have established dominance that it gets attached to you. And anytime he activates against you, you activate foul play. So more people are like joining with him to uh, kick your ass. Then there is a, uh, yeah, he has a bunch of minions that have guards, so he's constantly protected. Just a minion on his side. Uh, oh, yeah, and when revealed, resolve the hood's foul play. And then, oh, look at that upper hand. You resolve the hood's foul play, so he's constantly cycling. And then he, he does have a gun. He has, he, has, he has a few guns that allow him to scheme. He can dual, uh, dual wield, so he can increase his attack and his defense, or his scheme. Yep, and I mean, pretty much he doesn't have a lot to him specifically, but the fact that he's constantly bringing these guys out is very, very cool. Yeah, more upper hands that cause him to remove, uh, to do foul play. And I really, it doesn't matter what mode he's in, he's just going to do it. And then he does have one side scheme, and this one is incredibly annoying. It has hinder, which means uh, you have to listen to lips of an angel over and over. But after that, then you... Whenever the villain phase starts, you do his foul play ability. So, if he was just by himself, 
like, and you just had a random encounter deck. I mean, you can easily, uh, well, no, because you do, whenever you play against them, you do have to do, you just have, you can do any modular set. You don't have to do these seven as well, which is really, really cool. So, yeah, like, it, it just says, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, when it requires a standard, you can do whatever. When it requires expert, uh, it's just... Yeah, you're given the option to select seven modular sets at random to be used during the game, or specifically choose seven modular sets you wish to play against. So, once again, doesn't even have to be these these seven. Uh, and so that's pretty much the hood, but if he was just by himself, he's kind of lame. Like, if he just cycled a random encounter deck by himself. Uh, but with these in particular, I mean, I think it's just incredibly cool. Like, he's the mastermind. Uh over all these and somehow got them all to work together wish uh i knew more about like the lore but so that's the hood himself now let's talk about a little bit of what these uh scenario packs do or not scenario packs these modulars what's also really cool is it gives you strategy tips for the new ones that come in but let's go in terms of the difficulty so we have the streets of mayhem this one is pretty cool because there are four environments in the game and they there only be one out at a time it causes surge but it gives like an overall benefit kind of of where you're fighting which i think is pretty unique and something that hasn't been done a whole lot in marvel champions usually you just assume you're fighting in some at least i think you're either fighting in just new york or just some forest and i know absorbing man he brought in environments and this one but i think it's really cool that if you if there were more of these maybe they'll release like an environment deck or something that you just shuffle and you just have it out in play and something causes it to cycle to show you maybe you're moving around to give this kind of not necessarily more of a board game element just some atmosphere that allows you to be more immersed into the theme because even though i absolutely love this game i do think that the theme can be lost in the numbers unless you bring it out yourself. And it'd be cool if they included something that allowed you to do that. Like this does. So, sewer tunnels, uh, you each character gets retaliate and they affect all characters. Back alley enclave, each character gets plus one attack. Then you have warehouse district, uh, each player in play gets steady. And then secret lair. Uh, each enemy in play gains one acceleration icon, and each hero and ally gets an extra thwart. So, this one's just incredibly cool. Gives some atmosphere on where you're fighting. Then, we have the Brothers Grimm. Matt Damon and Heath Ledger. So, these, uh, there's really just one in here, and it is the brothers themselves. So, they have a one scheme and one attack, but... When they activate against you, discard cards from the top until an attachment is discarded. Reveal that card. And they have a few attachments. Back, uh, Blackbird Pellets. So, after... Oh yeah, it also says... Oh yeah. Uh, after attached enemy activates against you, discard this card. Then you discard one card at random from your hand and deal yourself one face-down encounter card. Then you have Corrosive Egg Bomb. After... Uh, attached enemy activates against you, discard this card. So basically, if these are attached, that's why there's the asterisk to the Brothers Grimm. They're using some magic. I also don't know who these are. I know the Brothers Grimm in, like, mythical lore, and, like, in terms of their, you know, Grimm's fairy tales, but I don't know who they are. But they use magic. And, like I said, if these are attached to them, then whenever they attack or activate against you, then they discard these to do some effects. So not too bad, they didn't come up too much a whole lot, uh, but I also didn't grab them every single time. So they're number two. Ransacked Armory brings in uh, some stupid armored guards and a bunch of different tech. So we have two armored guards. They're pretty weak, I mean, no scheme, one attack, but then three damage, but they have guard and toughness, which is annoying when they show up. And then we have some tech that they kind of go in and they steal, kind of like uh, Vulture in the Spider-Man movie. So we have Tech Gauntlets gives an extra attack, and then you attach it to a minion. Um, they get more hit points from the, the armor. Then we have stuff like a Flamethrower gives them plus three attack, and that's always fun. 
Uh, he gives it with the most remaining hit points. If you cannot, then you search the encounter deck and discard pile for a minion, put it into play, engage with you, and attach it to it. So, these are just extra items that come in and buff up any minion that is in play. Uh, but not super, um, not super challenging. Like, you can, you can deal with the, the ransacked armory people. Then we have number four, which is State of Emergency, which is right here. So these include side schemes, and we all love side schemes, but like, for example, um, Citywide, Citywide Crisis, when revealed, resolve each when revealed ability on each side scheme in play. If no, uh, re when revealed ability was resolved, two threat on each scheme. So it adds, it just bolsters more side schemes. And there's four in here. There's two citywide crises. And then, yep, discard the highest cost card in your hand with Feisty Heist. We have Offshore Inferno. When revealed, discard the lowest cost card that you control. So, of course, destroying, you know, your hand and therefore how much you can do. Also, having a, they all have acceleration tokens on them. So, basically, if you're just not dealing with these, like I said, there's four of them. If you're not dealing with them and a citywide crisis comes out, then that means you have to uh, do all those when revealed effects again, which is pretty horrible. Especially side schemes. They never seem like super like bad it's like oh, okay that's kind of there but then you start realizing over, over time oh, probably a little too late when the effects actually start uh hurting so then we have the beastie boys beastie boys which has beast mode when a stunned or confused friendly character would take any amount of damage increase that damage amount by one woo so that's actually not that bad unless he, unless you get stunned or confused and you're taking extra damage but it comes with, uh, you have Mandrill and Griffin. I don't, I don't know who these, who these people are. But Mandrill gains Retaliate X, where X is equal to the number of confused characters in play. When revealed, confuse each character you control. So now he has a uh, really high Retaliate. And then Griffin has Quick Strike. Uh, after Griffin attacks and damages a character, stun that character. When defeated, if there's a stunned friendly character in play, shuffle him so he comes back in being stunned. And then Double Trouble. I guess they work together. So when revealed, stun a character you control. Confuse a character you control. So whenever if this comes out, then they stun and confuse you, making them more powerful. They're just more annoying and can constantly be coming back. Then we have Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So we have the self-experimentation. So hey, I know who Mr. Hyde is. When revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for Mr. Hyde and reveal him. And then when a brute enemy would take any amount of damage, remove that much threat from this scheme instead. So what's interesting about all of these cards is that they essentially synergize together. Like the uh, Beastie Boys, like they don't have to be the ones to, of course, stun you. Like if another effect would stun you, then now um, Griffin would shuffle back. Uh, or if anyone's confused, then Hyde, not Hyde, um, whatever he was called, Mandrill, he ha now has more retaliation. So they, they really work together and just can very much overwhelm you, especially when Hood's foul play is constantly going off, then more of these guys are showing up to then combo off. So then Mr. Hyde, he just has 10 hit points and 3 attack. If Calvin Zalbo is engaged with the player, discard Calvin Zalbo. Mr. Hyde engages that player. Give Mr. Hyde a tough status card and deal one damage to each hero and ally in play. He's pretty rough. He is very, very strong. So he can show up at any time and just do quite a bit of damage. Then we have, uh, where was it? The Sinister Syndicate, which is kind of, I knew a few of these, but I, I didn't know. I know the Sinister Six, which are... But it, I guess these are the off-brand, or maybe they're just a different group when something happened. I don't know. Crime Pays is the side scheme in this. Search the encounter deck for a criminal minion, put it into play, engage with you. And then you have um, you have five, five different uh, uh, criminals. So Beetle is in here. You have Beetle, then Boomerang. Of course, Boomerang's super neat. 
Uh, force response after boomerang attacks you, deal one damage to each ally you control, and then and they all have a decent amount of health. Five, three, three, four. So I mean, the fives aren't nothing. You have Shocker here, and I this was the one guy I recognized. Force response after Shocker's attack stun the attacking character. And so just more minions that can possibly be revealed by other effects can show up. And then the Sinister Onslaught, depending on which mode you're in, Ego or Alter Ego, you have each criminal enemy in play schemes and reveal that each criminal enemy, enemy in play attacks you. So that's just awful. And these are very difficult because once again, they just, they just combo off. Basically, anytime they activate, they're doing something in addition to that. Then we have number eight, which is Crossfire's crew. Crossfire is Hawkeye's enemy. So uh, also, I mean, he's just masters of evil. Two and two, he has quick strike. And whenever he attacks, he attacks a friendly character with the fewest remaining hit points because he's a sniper and he tries to pick people off. Then there is a few more minions in here. I don't even know who this is. Off-brand Reaper, Moon Knight, uh, Doctor Doom. Like, what a loser. As an additional cost for an engaged player to ready hero ally, they must, uh, the player must spend a science resource. And these absolutely suck just because making you do extra stuff to do things is pretty horrible. Like, so Corruptor, that just kind of looks like an evil, um... Oh, what do they call him? Knight? Knight something from X-Men. Totally drawing a blank on who that is. Oh well. When revealed, exhaust each ally you control. Place one threat on the main scheme for each ally exhausted this way. So they just, they just do a bunch of stuff that are hindering the player. Which is a bad time. And then last but not least, number 9 is the Wrecking Crew. So... We have uh, their side scheme, top talent, the villain, and each elite minion gain Retaliate 1. And Retaliate never seems too bad until you start actually attacking and it stacks. And it's like, oh, they have Retaliate 5. Ooh, I only have 10 hit points. But what's interesting is that you have these guys now and not the, the four with their own decks, which I still think is pretty cool. They're kind of lame whenever you think about it. It's like, oh, hey, it's... Thor versus the Wrecking Crew. Hmm. I wonder who's gonna win. Oh, Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch? Huh. Oh, they mist pink misted them, like, immediately? Yeah, so... But whenever you're playing, like, normal human characters, Iron Man, uh, War Machine, Black Widow, pretty much Spider-Man, even, it's just, like, it makes a little bit more sense. But yeah, Wrecker, Pile Driver, Bulldozer, and Thunderbolt all have insanely high hit points. I mean, for for minions, really, that's that's a lot. Wrecker, uh, and they all have villainous, so they get boost cards as well, and that sucks when mil when minions are also getting boost cards. But if it's undefended, he gets plus two attack. As Wrecker, Pile Driver has Retaliate one, and I believe they have the same abilities as the other ones. Yeah, uh, Bulldozer gets gains over overkill. And then Thunderball, uh, after you attack, you deal one damage to each character that you control. So, I like how these guys are back, and they're just an extra addition to, instead of being kind of their own thing. Choose, having Wrecking Crew to be their own scenario is kind of weird, but they are emphasized a lot more than that. But, that's pretty much the hood. And if you're, if you're choosing which ones, like I said, there's strategy tips in this little booklet. But overall, I highly recommend The Hood, uh, mainly just because it gives you way more variety, way more modular sets to include in just your regular, like, game. You can pick Red Skull and then choose Wrecking Crew and, you know, Streets of Mayhem if you want to just X, like, two random encounter sets these can be thrown in. But... Fighting, choosing, when it, whenever these are the, the nine that you pick from to fight the hood, man, do they overwhelm you pretty quick. In the games that I played, uh, he wasn't a pushover, and I, honestly, I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know anything about the hood, so I was like, okay, like, 
this is a new scenario pack. But the way that they all synergize together is really cool. I'm extremely impressed because they're, none of them are alike. They all have their own individual theme, which is a huge prop to kind of a small pack like this to just add. I um, wish I knew kind of, you know, who he was, but he looks like a regular guy that somehow was able to corral all these organizations to work together. But... Uh, in terms of overall theme with the hood, I mean, I think they work together. I think the fact that, yeah, e each, you know, recruiting and then the, the main schemes bringing in new organizations uh, at random as well. So you're going you're gonna to get a totally different game each time you play against him um, is really cool. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're not aliens. They're not something, uh, you know, bombastic like anything from there i mean they're not hydra they're, not, they're just they're criminals but that's a little bit more grounded so you you have your you have both sides depending on how you just want to play this modular set uh i mean you could have the hood organized kree and uh other sets that i'm totally drawing a blank on but you could have him do that and that's one of the huge pluses to this game so on a scale of one to ten uh, i'm gonna give the hood I'm going to give it a 9. I think this is an, a must-have scenario pack. If you're looking to get, like, a few heroes, you get the base set, of course. If you want a few extra heroes and then you want maybe a modular set, then I would say get this one first because you're just going to get more bang for your buck. But that is it, everyone. Those are my thoughts on the Hood scenario pack. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.